Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs and this is a follow-up video to the last one where I pointed out some or a lot of design errors in this cheap little eBay XR2206 based uh, analog function generator. And in the meantime, uh, I've um, found some things out and I could optimize um, the function generator with uh, changing some of the components. Uh, but if you uh, saw the first video, um, you might remember the first problem we had was that uh, the output signal is not stable if the uh, voltage, um, the power voltage, goes above 12 volts. I will show you this again. Now we get at 13 volts the signal is totally out of bounds and this starts even at 12.0 volts. You can see a little bit of jitter and only if we go a little bit below 12 volts then the signal is stable. Now uh, one of the uh, commenters uh, of the first video um, mentioned he had the same problem and um, he found out finally, it, it is Daniel from, from Ireland, uh, that the XR22i6 um, 06 chips here are in fact or probably uh, fake or counterfeit uh, chips and uh, let's try out if this is true because here I have at hand uh, two original XR2206 and I've already compared the XR logo and it looks a little bit different this one here has the date code 1049, which is 49th week of 2010. And the one on the cheap eBay uh, thing has a date code of 0919, which is 19th week of 2009. So uh, they are only uh, one year apart and I don't think that XR changed their logo. So this might be true and we'll just uh, change the, um, the, well, not original, the eBay IC with, with one uh, from our supply. And let's see if, if this uh, instability problem is uh, still present with the 100% original XR chip. So I've turned power off drawing out that chip and replacing it with the 100% original XR one and let's see if I turn on power it works and now we go to 15 volts and no instability so I think Daniel from Ireland is correct uh, these are, are fake or counterfeit uh, XR chips which only work up to 12 volts or, or something below 12 volts. Well for me that is okay because I want this thing to be battery operated with 9 volts uh, to be portable and uh, isolated from any mains power source or uh, anything else. So for me this is okay, uh, but it's quite interesting. You cannot use the original uh, eBay uh, chip for voltages even near to 12 volts. So that was uh, the first thing not I but Daniel uh, found out and I can confirm it. These are probably counterfeit XR chips. So, but now let's uh, go on to the other issues uh, we had and how you can uh, fix these issues by yourself by replacing some components. You might even already see that there has been a lot of uh, resoldering going on here uh, on the uh, little PCB. But we'll go through it uh, point by point and um, I'll first show you the results here on the oscilloscope and then finally uh, I'll show you uh, a um, revised uh, schematics with the fixed uh, issues or what you have to do 
uh, in the, on the PCB and uh, in the schematics uh, to fix the problems yourself. So the first annoying thing was that the output signal is uh, DC uh, coupled and this is quite easy uh, to fix. Just uh, put a uh, electrolytic uh, capacitor here at the output terminal of the sine or triangle uh, output. Uh, the value can be anything between 10 and 100 uh, microfarad. We will discuss later what's the difference if you use different values. Anyway. That is easy, you don't have to do any uh, rework, any resoldering, any change of components. Just uh, put an uh, electrolytic cap at the output and you have an uh, AC coupled signal. So that was easy. Uh, the next annoying thing is that the amplitude control was not very good. Um, you couldn't get lower than something around, I don't remember exactly, 2 volts peak peak or something like that. That is m much too much uh, if you want to measure audio circuits uh, because if you use the line level input uh, it's best to have a an amplitude something in the range between 50 millivolts and perhaps one volt um, RMS. And so this took a little bit of resoldering. We will see later in in the schematics, uh, you have to replace two resistors and one potentiometer, the amplitude potentiometer. I will show you the effect if you do it as I did, where you also have to uh, interchange the terminals of the amplitude um, potentiometer, that you now, with a logarithmic pot, um, you get very fine control and I'll change the vertical division even down to very small amplitudes. It goes down to, let's see, I have to, to around, what do we have? Uh, let me see, what's the vertical division? Uh, five millivolts per division. So we have around 10 millivolts uh, peak, which is uh, 7 millivolts RMS. Uh, so we, we get quite a big range down to, to, down to the millivolts range and we get a very fine control if we use a logarithmic port and change to resistors. And let's see what's, what is the maximum we get. Uh, it's now 500 millivolts per division. So we get one volt peak, which is 700 millivolts RMS. And that's for my purpose, that's exactly uh, the right uh, range. And I think for uh, most of you, this will also be the right range. Uh, remember, if you go to triangle, the amplitude goes up. Uh, that's simply due to the design. The sign signal is constructed with a, with a kind of filter, let's call it that way, out of the triangle so that the uh, the peaks are capped off and the uh, th this this part of the curve is rounded and there therefore the sine signal is of course lower so the uh, triangle wave is uh, what do we have 500 millivolts per division is uh, 2 volts peak or 4 volts peak peak nearly the full range when you use it with uh, 12 volts. And uh, so the sine wave, as I told you, is now exactly the right way for me. Next thing about when we already are at the sine wave, um, uh, there was a fixed resistor for the uh, total harmonic distortion uh, control, uh, which even had the wrong value. I've replaced this with a small SMD trimmer with uh, 500 ohms as recommended in the data sheet. And now I'll show you how you can adjust the sine wave uh, by yourself to get minimum uh, distortion. Uh, you either now can couple the signal to your PC, to the line input, and use a, um, a software 
where you can uh, see the, the spectrum and then minimize the uh, harmonics. Or we can do it here with our digital uh, oscilloscope. Let me just find the right screwdriver. And we use, of course, the FFT function. Let's put it on and just have to find again. Yeah, this, this was the right uh, value. So now here you can see I've set it to nearly one kilohertz. It's 991, so let's say one kilohertz. That's the best. Uh, and most used frequency for audio uh, measurements. And here you can see the uh, fundamental uh, spectral line at one kilohertz. And here you already can see one, two, and then here at the end still some harmonics. So these peaks here, the, uh, the first, or uh, the second peak and the third, these are the, uh, the spectral lines of interest and they have to be minimized. Now I will uh, distort the wave totally. Now you can see uh, the um, the difference between the height of the fundamental line, the one kilohertz line, and here the harmonics is quite small. So we have, as you can see here on the marching wave lines, it's totally distorted. Now let's slowly turn the potentiometer and watch out for the difference in the in the height of the spectral lines. And we should um, seek out the great. Now you can see the fundamental line here remains constant, but now the the uh, harmonics here goes down, down, and down, and then at some point it's here it starts to rise again. So we have to turn a little bit back, tongue at the right angle, and seek out the minimum. So that should be around the minimum. And now let's enlarge the signal, turn off the uh, FFT. And yeah, this looks really good, like a relatively clean uh, sign signal. I've, uh, by the way, I've put in the fake uh, Chinese chip again because I can I can live with that because, as I told you, I'll only operate this at uh, with nine volt battery power. Uh, so uh, the um, the distortion um, uh, control is uh, is working quite well. This really looks like a clean uh, sign signal. Uh, let me enlarge it a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Let's, let's be it that way. So um, if you want to have this, you have to do a little bit of uh, SMD work. This, this little SMD uh, trimmer here just fit uh, as a replacement for the, for the fixed resistor. Uh, it's not necessary. If you use the fixed resistor, the, the signal we have seen it in the first video is, is okay. Uh, but um, why not optimize uh, this, uh, this little analog function generator? So this was the part with uh, uh, the um, distortion minimization and now and the amplitude control. And now let's uh, go on to the next thing. And that is the frequency control. As you might remember, there is a coarse and a fine pot and the the values of the coarse and the fine pots, they were nearly the same. They differed, differed only by a factor of two. The coarse potentiometer has 100K and the fine potentiometer origi originally had uh, 50K. Now I've replaced this with a 10K potentiometer. And let me show you the effect. Now I have, this is the coarse one. So. Uh, now we get with the coarse one here uh, a suitable range. The, the total range uh, between minimum and maximum setting has changed a little bit. It has become uh, smaller, but that's okay for me. I only need, uh, now it goes from 
if we have the jumper here at this position, from 200 hertz to 1.6 kilohertz. And with the fine potentiometer, I will explain later, um, the range of the fine potentiometer is uh, depending on how, what setting the uh, coarse potentiometer has. Um, you can also improve this as a very last step, but then you have really have to rewire the potentiometers. Anyway, at the, uh, at the maximum frequency setting here, we can now with the fine pot change the frequency from 1.5 kilohertz up to 4.3 and at the lowest setting we can change it from 230 to 209. So you can see at the lowest frequency position uh, we have an e extremely fine control of only a few percent. At the highest setting uh, we have with the fine port a range of more than a factor of two. So that is nearly unavoidable, but anyway, you get a much finer control with the fine pot if you just change it from 50k to uh, 10k linear potentiometer. So the next kind of issue, if you uh, remember it from the first video, was with the square wave output which is usually used for, um, for using at uh, digital logic inputs. And um, they, the Chinese uh, ones say they used a 1K um, pull-up resistor, which with uh, 12 volts um, um, power supply uh, voltage uh, gives you a little bit too much current for some kind of logic families. That could be up to 10 milliamps current into a, a digital logic input that is working at let's say 3.3 or 5 volts so that could be a little a bit too much. The original data sheet re recommends 10 uh, K, 10 kilo ohms. So I've replaced the 1K resistor with a 10K resistor but I've just noticed there is a little problem. Um, we are now at 5 kilohertz uh, and the square wave still looks okay. So let's uh, turn up the uh, frequency. Just hold on a second. So uh, if we increase the frequency now already at 20 kilohertz, the uh, square wave, uh, the, the rising edge uh, is not looking uh, as straight as it should be. And this becomes worse. Here we are at 50 kilohertz, which is uh, not very much. And here, from here on, it's still halfway okay at 93 kilohertz. Uh, but it's not very nice for a digital logic. And now we're at the highest frequency. Um, and this is not use well it might be usable for digital logic input but that has no similarity now to a um, square wave and even here at 500 kilohertz or here 155 so uh, again this must be due to the fake uh, chinese uh, xr chip because the original uh, XR chip does not have this behavior, uh, so it perhaps the 10K is a little bit too much. Uh, depending on your application, you should perhaps leave it at the 1K resistor, which gives you a much better square wave at the higher frequency. At 1 kilohertz, everything is okay. Let's change back. What do we have here? 400 hertz now. Um, so at, at the lower uh, frequency everything is okay, but if you really want to use uh, frequencies above 50 kilohertz, uh, you should perhaps keep the original 1K resistor if you using the fake uh, Chinese XR chip. So these were the main fixes or improvements. Uh, as you can see, I've still changed one electrolytic here 
and added another electrolytic as is recommended in the data sheet. There's still ample uh, space here on the PCB to do these additional uh, components. And uh, so finally, uh, the result is now this thing works really fine for my application. It has a fine amplitude control, minimized sign distortion, fine frequency uh, control, more, uh, enough stability with the original chip. And um, uh, so this was for me quite successful. And now we'll take a look at the uh, single uh, steps uh, I did um, on the uh, schematics, which I have uh, well, not reverse engineered, but I've tried to keep the original de designations of the uh, component uh, numerations uh, exactly the same to the uh, original schematics you get when you buy this um, uh, kit, so that you can directly compare um, the original schematics with the improved schematics. So let's go step by step through uh, the single changes I've made. Um, as you can see, I've noted them all down here and I will give you a screenshot of the schematic um, <clears throat> for download uh, and the link will be down in the description of the video or in the comments. Anyway, let's start with here with a C10. Uh, this is the AC coupling capacitor and you might wonder why I've put a range here between 10 and 100 microfarad. Well, the reason is um, it takes some time for, or look at it at that way, the positive terminal directly connected to the output of the IC uh, has the DC offset. Now, um, the, the negative terminal uh, which you connect to your circuit um, has to discharge first of all into the input impedance of your circuit. If this is a high impedance um, input like one mech ohm, well it takes about 100 seconds until if you use a 100 microfarad uh, electrolytic, it takes one nearly or something around 100 seconds until uh, the, the capacitor has discharged here the negative terminal. Um, if you have a mid-range mid -range, um, input impedance like in, in uh, stereo equipment, uh, which is in the range of 10 to 50 kilo ohms, um, the discharge time until you get a really symmetrical um, output signal centered on the ground uh, signal, on the ground pin, uh, then that will be much faster even with 100 microfarad. Um, but a good compromise could be a 10 microfarad, so you get at, um, even at high impedance uh, inputs, you get a moderately uh, fast discharge until you finally have your symmetrical uh, output signal without the DC offset. But there is a downside if you use a smaller value. Um, the capacitor uh, together with the input impedi impedance of your circuit builds a high pass filter which means the lowest frequencies are attenuated and this is proportional um, the, the higher the value of your uh, output capacitor of the AC coupling capacitor, um, the lower the limiting uh, frequency, uh, that means a higher value is better because you then get a uh, lower signals without lower frequencies without any uh, attenuation. Um, so usually 10 microfarad should be sufficient. You can easily change the value because this capacitor is put to the screw terminal output of the little circuit. Um, so no worries, uh, take whatever fits to your application. Next, and that's a little bit complicated to explain how I got the fine amplitude con uh, control. There are two steps, but let me first explain what sets the amplitude here at pin 3 
which is the amplitude setting output. Um, the amplitude um, is set by the value of the resistance here to the mid-range voltage because as you can see here is a voltage divider uh, which halves or at the at the uh, connection there is exactly half the voltage from the power supply voltage VCC to ground um, and the total resistance from your trim pot or potentiometer and these two resistors determines uh, the output amplitude. Now that means even if you set the potentiometer to zero, which would ideally give zero volts output, there is still the impedance or the resistance of these two resistors and that means in the original, the original values were 5.1k and because there are two of them you get uh, half the value, which means uh, in the original circuit, the minimum resistance is 2.5K. You cannot set it any lower because these two resistors limit the minimum resistance from the amplitude pin to the center voltage, the mid-range voltage between VCC and ground. So the first fix is lowering the values of R3 and R5 from originally 5.1k to 1k gives you already with the original potentiometer a lower minimum output voltage. Uh, you cannot lower this down to, to let's say at 100 ohms the, the current through these two resistors becomes excessively large or the power drain on your power supply uh, becomes uh, too large especially if you use uh, batteries. Uh, so 1k is the best uh, compromise for me because you could, could see uh, we get down to a few millivolts a minimum output voltage. Now the second thing is the uh, original circuit has a 50k, 50 kilo ohms potentiometer here and that's way too much especially if you are working at 12 volts or below. Uh, we saw this because at the, if, you, if we set it to maximum, uh, we already had uh, clipping at the output signal. Uh, so the highest um, practical value would be 25k, but for me 10k is the optimum uh, value. This gives uh, a maximum amplitude of around 1 volt peak for the sign signal and what was it? 2.5 or 3 volts peak for the triangle wave at 9 to 12 volts supply voltage and the second thing which I complained about in the first video was the direction of the, the turning uh, direction was the wrong way. Uh, Counterintuitively if you turn it clockwise the amplitude was lowered instead of getting higher. Um, so you can fix this by uh, simply um, cutting off the center pin and not connecting it to the upper terminal here as in the original circuit but as shown here to the other to the lower terminal then you get the right direction the intuitive direction how you turn a volume pot you turn it clockwise and sound gets louder and here turn it clockwise and the amplitude goes up and the best thing is to use then a 10k logarithmic uh, potentiometer which is readily available in the form factor that they use here. A 25k logarithmic is hard to get by uh, so that's another reason why 10k uh, is the, the um, optimum value for me because there I could easily replace it with a logarithmic potentiometer and then you have very fine control even at the lower amplitude value. So you could see it on the oscilloscope how fine the control now is going down very low and precise fine control. So what else do we have? Next point is um, the frequency control here. Uh, the coarse potentiometer I've left at 100k as the original value but the fine 
uh, potentiometer was originally 50k so I replaced this with a 10k linear pot. Here logarithmic does not make very much uh, sense. Um, 10k linear is okay and you could see the effect. I will show you at the end how you still could improve uh, the fine frequency um, control because as you could see if you set the coarse potentiometer to minimum, the fine potentiometer has a different frequency range than when the, the coarse potentiometer is set at the highest value. Uh, that's, that cannot be avoided if you use such a uh, topology of the uh, minimum resistor R6 and the two potentiometers. But anyway, that I will show in the end. The first step should be replacing R7 with a 10k potentiometer. Then we have the, the pull-up resistor for the square wave output. Well, now it depends on your application. Um, if you know that your digital circuits uh, can um, safely um, get around with 10 milliamps uh, through the protection di input uh, diodes, uh, then 1k is okay, that's the original value, and then you get a relatively clean square wave also at the higher frequencies uh, up to it stays clean up to about 100 kilohertz and then the uh, rising edge will start to not look very uh, straight upwards anymore up to one megahertz uh, but if you are working with delicate digital circuits which might not be fine with 10 milliamps input current, then enlarge the value of this resistor. Uh, 10K has the disadvantage that with the fake Chinese chip, um, uh, there you don't get the higher frequencies. Uh, yeah, you get them, but you don't get a clean square wave. So perhaps 2.2K or 3.3K is a good compromise. Then what next do we have? Um, you can go to the effort as I did, um, just getting a small SMD uh, trimmer with 500 ohms just to adjust the distortion to, min to minimum uh, value. Uh, for me that made sense because the original value do did not give a very clean sine wave and as you could see on the oscilloscope after adjusting the value uh, it was really quite clean. Um, if you further want to optimize um, the sine wave, you could add uh, here the so-called sym symmetry adjustment uh, potent, uh, trim, trim pot. 25k is the right value, uh, but that's uh, again a little bit of fiddling around. You should use an SMB potentiometer because you don't have very much space on the P uh, PCB uh, to place this this potentiometer. I didn't do it because I, uh, I thought uh, adjusting the distortion here uh, with the main trim pot is enough for me. The sine wave was clean enough with distortion well below 1%, so uh, that's only an addition. Um, you could replace C3, uh, this electrolytic, which is in the uh, original version 10 microfarads, but the data sheet r r uh, recommends one uh, microfarad. This is not critical. Um, as you can see here at the amplitude setting, I forgot um, the data, data sheet recommends a, an additional electrolytic of 10 microfarads. That was uh, the one uh, you could see I've soldered uh, uh, between the terminals uh, of the of ground and here between the two resistors. Not necessary, but this gives a more stable amplitude uh, control or amplitude setting. And uh, finally, uh, depending on your application, you should replace the fake XR2206 that you get supplied or probably fake or counterfeit uh, chip with uh, an original one which might cost more than the whole Chinese uh, set but 
for me, um, nine vol uh, a clean operation w at nine to uh, twelve volts is okay. If you want to use this chip with higher than uh, twelve volts supply voltage, you have to replace the fake chip with an original chip. Now, these are the main changes. Um, the um, um, uh, the steps are in, in kind of the order of the steps is in kind of uh, important. So you should uh, do the, the, f the first four steps are I think the most important one and then it gets uh, depending on uh, how good you want to have your little eBay function generator. Now finally I'll show you um, as a last step how to get a finer frequency control. Um, the reason why the, uh, the potentiometer here does give you a non-linear uh, frequency change depending on the angle that you set it is simply because the frequency is 1 over or the, the formula for the frequency depends on the used capacitor, okay, but this remains constant depending on where you put the jumper. Variable is the resistance and it's 1 over the uh, product of the resistance and the selected capacitor. And that means that this ha um, this does not have a linear relation when you uh, turn it. It has a 1 on x uh, relation and um, that's hard to come uh, to make this more linear, especially the fine frequency control. You can do this if you do not put the fine frequency control in series with the coarse potentiometer, but you put it with a different value, with, uh, you, you then have to get a 1 meg ohm uh, potentiometer in the right form factor, which is also not easily to get. Uh, usually uh, the, the values stop at 100 kilo ohm, so a 1 meg ohm potentiometer with the required um, form factor is difficult to get. If you get one, you could put uh, the fine control in parallel to the 100k um, main or coarse frequency control potentiometer. But that, I would think that's a little bit of overkill. Uh, let's be content with the other improvements and then this thing works like a treat. It, it's exactly what I want it uh, to be for my purposes. And so uh, that was it. Uh, if you liked it, uh, then be, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanga Labs.